Hi guys, and welcome to the grade 10 content um, as outlined in caps. Um, I'm Mr. G and I will be taking you through this. I'm going to be quite um, slow with this topic because it is algebra. And um, you will notice we always start the year with algebra because algebra is very fundamental in learning mathematics. You will not enjoy the rest of the topics unless you understand algebra. So what we will be learning here about numbers, about simplifying, about solving for x, factorization, and et cetera, it is not just going to end with the discussion and uh, algebra. It is actually going to be there when you do your trigonometry. It is going to be there when you do your geometry when you do your uh, functions, when you do your finance, all the other topics in mathematics are actually interlinked, interwoven um, with algebra. So I urge you guys to really take this topic seriously and make sure that you actually understand and practice on your own. Um, you know, find problems from your textbook, Google on, uh, stuff on the internet that relate to the topics that will be studied here. It's one thing to teach maths, it's another thing to do maths. So I really need you and urge you guys to um, get into the habit of working on your own. Right, without any further ado, let us start this discussion by uh, recalling, okay, a, a quick recap from grade nine. So we, we learned about numbers, okay? We learned about numbers and we, I believe now we are very much familiar with the set of natural numbers, double script N, and I can denote this as numbers from one, two, three, up to infinity, okay? Counting numbers, basically. I've got that uh, whole numbers, basically natural numbers, but of course with the addition of zero or inclusion of zero. And then, as, as we started to do operations and we realized that, well, I've got a problem once I say two minus three, I mean, this is negative one and negative one is not anywhere in there. We then started again to define more number sets. And the next set that you guys learned about is the set of integers, which are all positive and negative uh, natural num uh, whole numbers, natural numbers, whichever way it pleases you. So, um, uh, I'll do this to show that from minus infinity, somewhere to zero, uh, one, up to two, up to three, et cetera. As a matter of fact, you can think of the set of integers as a number line, okay? That's it, number line. You know, num not the four from your number line in the middle is the number zero, then going for to the left is negatives, to the right is positive, okay? Um, then we we realized yes we can do addition here okay we can do addition but subtraction is a problem here so now with the integers we can do both addition and subtraction we don't have a problem a problem comes if i want to say two divided by three this number does not belong to that set anymore if i want to say one over two this number does not belong to that set anymore. So we then uh, again came up <coughs> with another set of rational numbers, okay? And this, you know, it's all the numbers in the form A over B, such that B is not zero because we do not really enjoy defining a uh, star, I mean, dividing by zero in mathematics, okay? And then, of course, we then uh, had. Uh, well, if you haven't had the story, um, some say it came from the man called Pythagoras. And um, you will remember in grade nine, you learned a little bit about the theorem of Pythagoras, which, by the way, you are going to use for the rest of your life until you finish metric. And then um, you will start exploring other stuff thereafter. So uh, this guy has realized if you've got one here, one here, and you try and figure out the hypotenuse, you're going to have one squared plus one squared, and this is going to be what? Uh, one plus one, which is going to be two. 
But if I want the hypotenuse, remember this is the hypotenuse squared, okay? So if I want the hypotenuse, the actual hypotenuse, not the hypotenuse squared, I'm going to have to take what? The square root. So I'm left with square root of two. And so they tried to represent this number here as a ratio to say, no, this number must belong to that set because this is the biggest set. But they discovered that when we can't actually represent this thing as a ratio, as a matter of fact, this number here lies somewhere, it's just somewhere, somewhere between one and two. It's just somewhere there. But the problem is we cannot really get to represent it uh, uh, by, um, by uh, with a, we can't get to represent it as, as a fraction. So, so that was the problem there. And, and um, so they discovered, well, we must define a new set then of numbers uh, called irrational numbers, or there must be a set called irrational numbers. So <clears throat> all your numbers, guys, square root two, um, square root three, um, square root of five, et cetera, we refer to those <coughs> as irrationals. Then, of course, we, we, we know algebra, we like solving equations like this, x squared minus one equals to zero. And you know, we will say x squared equals to one, then we'll take the square root, then we say x is plus or minus one. But then again, <laughs> one of the good days, another equation came up, x plus one equals to zero. And we said, well, let's try solve this. And if I take that, I have x, but wait a minute, what on f is the square root of minus one? We realized we can't fit this into any of the square roots. So we said, well, we, we're gonna refer to this stuff, this numbers as non-real, because I, I mean, really, the, the, this is not happening. So the square roots of negative numbers such as these, we refer to those as non-real numbers, of course, um, I, I must be very clear here, this is a square, square root. It's a different case if we've got a cube root there, okay? Cube root of negative one is defined, okay? Because if you think about it, um, we, uh, the, uh, when I raise one to the exponent two, I get positive. But when I raise, ne I mean negative one, sorry, if I raise negative one to the exponent two, I get a positive one. But if I raise a negative one to the exponent three, I still get a negative one. You see, it's, it's that issue. That, that's where the, <clears throat> the logic comes from. So guys, why the discussion? Why, why bother about this? Well, there's one question that you can be guaranteed that you will get when you deal with this uh, topic or in your exam paper. And here is the question, okay? Between which integers does square root three lie? That's, that's one of the questions that you know for sure, oh, it's gonna come, it's gonna come. And, and, and I've, seen, I've seen learners struggling with this. So very simple, guys. Just keep calm when you get this. So what you're going to start with is you're going to ask yourself, okay, um, I've got square root three, okay? So the idea is actually, what is the next perfect square after the number three, okay? What is the next perfect square under, after the number three? So let me do that, okay? That perfect square is four, all right? And then what is the next, uh, the other perfect square there is one, right? Because two is not a perfect square, two is irrational. So if you think about it, if I do that and I do that and I do that, then I must have one less than square root three, less than two. So you can see that the integers, integers remember, positive, negative numbers, all right, which um, are not decimals or something of that nature. Those are the numbers that are integers, okay, whole numbers basically that can either be negative or positive, okay. So then this will be the kind of answer that you will be required uh, 
to produce. Guys, very, very important for this discussion. I'm not going to bore you about rounding off numbers, guys. I think that's one of the things that you master very much. Um, and probably you, could, you can even do that or handle that with your calculator. One thing that I want to talk about is how do we represent numbers on the real line, or, okay, on, on the number line. And by the way, all those numbers that I spoke about, natural numbers, whole numbers, um, the integers, and the rationals, the irrationals, and yeah, all that, all these numbers, we classify them as real numbers. Remember, these integers, whole numbers, and all that are rationals by themselves. So they are a subset of that. So basically, we can define the real number space as the set of all rationals and irrationals. Okay, I like doing that to say irrational because that one is illogical. This one is a bit nice. Okay, <laughs> anyways. Uh, no stress about that. Okay, so let's quickly check how do we denote numbers? How, how do we write, how do we represent numbers um, on a number line? So here is a number line, and I'm going to start here. Let's see this as a zero. And as I said to the right, a one, two, three, etc., minus one, minus two, minus three minus four, etc., and that's a four there. Let's, let's just stay there for argument's sake. Now, suppose I give you a set, okay? So you, you'll get some of these notations, and, and, and that's what I need you guys to get used to. So maybe if you want a theme for this, you can say set builder a notation. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at this. So if I give you a set and I say x, the set such that x is greater than or equals to 2 and x is an integer. This is very critical, guys. And I ask you to represent this on a number line. And you need to be careful and consider you can't, you can't just draw an arrow and say, well, this is what it is going to be. What this means, what this arrow means, guys, is that you are saying even the number here between two and three is part of the set. But according to these restrictions, uh, this restriction here, that's not true. This number between two and three is not an integer. So you need to be very careful of such little things because they can really cost you much. So if I'm gonna answer this, guys, I must say, okay, x greater than or equals to two. So that means all the num, all the integers actually from two and above are included in the set, okay, et cetera, and et cetera. Maybe you can do this to show that, et cetera, and et cetera. Are you with me? Um, I should have probably uh, bounded this set so that you can get a sense of this better. All right. so. I want you to pause the video. Okay, it's, it's okay. Before you pause, maybe let me take another example. What about the set of numbers uh, that is represented here? So that was example A, now example B. So what about the set of numbers X such that um, X now is greater or equals to two? And this time I tell you, well, X, um, can be a real number, okay? And I say X can be a real number. Then in that sense, guys, I can actually now draw this line there. And then having drawn that line, well, I have my zero here. All I want is a two, okay? So I'm gonna say one, then I'm gonna say two. Then I can come here and do a dot. Now, because this thing says greater than or equal to, it means that two is included. So to show that the two is included, I color in, and then I draw a straight arrow there to show that any number, whether it's a decimal or it's irrational, whatever number comes after two, will definitely be included in that solution. Are we together, guys? I hope you are mindful of that fact. Maybe let's take another nice la last example. In this case, a closed interval. 
what about a set of x values such that x between li uh, lies between the interval minus three and maybe four okay maybe i should include this minus three here and here now i'm telling you that well guys x is a real number it's real yeah things just got real here <clears throat> so i'm gonna set this up and i'm going to put a zero here and all i need is to get to minus three so i'm gonna say minus one here minus two and minus three this here will be one that will be two that will be three i must at least get to four okay you can have a five there it's fine doesn't really matter now i start okay minus three i am here okay four i am there i start with my bounds then next i check my signs okay this is less than or equal to that means the three is included so i must color this in with four i must leave it like that and all i do i put because this real numbers okay then i just join this two to represent my solution so whenever they say represent your solution on a number line they mean this kind of thing so this question will usually come when you solve inequalities guys we will get to inequalities don't worry when we uh, when we've done a bit of equations we'll get to inequalities we are now just building up the uh, foundation all right so these questions usually come there now this is set builder notation what about interval notation what about writing this whole thing in interval notation well guys then what i will do if i write this thing in interval notation what i can do here is well i can say x is an element of now look i use square brackets because of this inclusion to up to infinity now infinity can never be included and then i must indicate um this is a two remember i must indicate that x belongs to integers okay here again i will say well in interval notation i will say well x is an element of numbers from two again up to infinity so notice where there is inclusion i use the square bracket and then i'll say that such that x is a real number okay and then but so we usually agree that it is a real number so but then i'm just for accuracy to show you that you know your story that's what you'll be doing finally if i want to write this one here in set, uh, set uh, in in interval notation i'll say well x is an element of now, now that's very important i'll say minus three here and then i'll say four here now i'll put it round bracket here because four is not included and i'll say x is real okay just for accuracy for uh, for precision so to say so that is exactly what interval notation means guys um i hope you get this i hope you really catch this and maybe you may want to try and really uh, write this um on a on a number line and then of course represent write it also in interval notation so i want you to try the following first of all try and write the following uh, in interval notation when you have written it in interval notation represent the solution on the number line and maybe let's try also this one here minus six um and that is p of course and then between maybe let's make this one two so that you don't write a lot okay so maybe let me give you five examples it's nice to do five uh, in mathematics guys so how about this one what if here i say x is less than a uh, negative two and what if here i say x is greater than or equals to one and what about the solution um x um maybe between um uh, you know let's say here 10 and then x here 
actually I should do that is between uh, negative one. So how about that? Remember for each of this, what you're gonna do, write this in interval notation. That's one. And then two, what you got to do secondly, okay? And uh, represent this on a number line, okay? Go for this guys and try it. You can hit um, a like, comment uh, uh, on our YouTube page and then subscribe also so that when other lessons are uploaded, uh, you can be notified and uh, catch up. I hope you have benefited from this. I hope it has cleared matters for you. After trying this, you can go to our Facebook page, inbox us. Uh, there's a direct link to the WhatsApp page there or text us. And then if you wanna send us the solution so that we verify for you, we are happy to do that. And we are happy to engage with you, probably add you to our, to, uh, our mathematics groups and you know move on until you finish your high school career. Thanks for watching guys, um, take care.